After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools! Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms. And behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Pablo dice que para la libertad Cristo nos ha liberado. Es muy importante que uh, no pensamos a Dios que Él es nuestro dueño, sino que es nuestro Padre. Entonces, para servirlo no es una obligación como un, un siervo, sino un privilegio, servir al Señor en libertad. The, the first reading today, St. Paul He has this marvelous line. He says, for freedom, for freedom, Christ has set us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Right? It's kind of interesting that uh, St. Paul in this letter, he says that we have been set apart for freedom. And yet one of the ways that St. Paul throughout the Bible, or maybe, maybe I'll just ask this as a, as a Bible trivia question, see if anybody knows. Right? You know, there's many ways that Paul describes himself Uh, in his letter, he describes himself as a, as a sinner, as an apostle, right? a servant of God. Right? Does anybody know how he describes himself the most right? in his letters? He calls himself a slave. Right? I think I've not heard somebody say it out there. Right? Yeah, so he describes himself as a slave of Christ Jesus. And so it's kind of interesting that in this letter to the Galatians, He says that Christ has set us free for freedom. How does being a slave and being free coincide? It's kind of an interesting idea. All of us we know living in the, in the United States and living in the modern age, right? Freedom is something that uh, we hold terribly dear right, to our hearts and to our souls. It's part of our uh, patriotism, right, this idea of freedom. And freedom is one of the ideas in the modern age that is maybe held up above all others. That freedom is like the highest value. And of course it is. But one of the things that we tend to forget and misunderstand in our modern age is that even though freedom may be one of the highest values, it is not the highest value. In fact, freedom exists for something beyond itself. In our modern age, we tend to think about freedom as in we think about like freedom from certain things. But really, the way the church always talks about it is that we are free for something. And somebody learning how to play an instrument, right? That they aren't any more free by ignoring what their teacher says. That's a freedom from, you know, freedom from instruction. It's not actually helpful. You're not actually free to make any music. True freedom means that you have a teacher and you have a guide so that you can be free to play beautiful music. Freedom exists for something else. The highest value is not to be free from any restraint. Rather, it's to be free for the greatest of goods. As a matter of fact, uh, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, he has this uh, great line he talks about in, in one of his books. He talks about how Really, if you think about it, what all of us long for more than anything else is not freedom at all. What all of us human beings we long for more than anything else is actually to be a slave to someone or something. And you might think that sounds crazy, right? But think about you know, the kinds of things we do as human beings. I mean, when I was a, when I was a young man and I was really into you know different sports or different TV shows or something like that, right? And I became a fanatic. I bought the jerseys. I watched all the games. I researched all the teams. 
I basically made myself a slave to that value. When people get married, what, is, what is, happens when people get married? They use wedding rings as a sign that they are being chained to one another. That the person they love, they love so much that they basically enslave themselves to that person. They say this person is so valuable that I am surrendering everything else in my life for this. The human heart is not necessarily made for freedom. It's meant to surrender itself entirely to that which is most valuable. Those of you who are parents, you know how much you become a slave in many ways to your children. So, many, so much of your time and your hours and your energy. But it doesn't make you bitter, it doesn't make you sad, it fulfills you. What we long more than anything else is to surrender ourselves to that which is most valuable. And that's why there's no contradiction when, when St. Paul says that we have been set apart for freedom and yet at the same time he calls himself a slave. He has chosen to give his life entirely to he who is most valuable, the Lord of the universe. And all of us, as we go throughout our lives, we might, you know, day by day, slowly but surely, more and more, allow ourselves to become slaves of God, submitting ourselves to his will and his service. 